What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to continue the How Good Is Your Overwatch League Team series, and by popular demand, I will be talking about the Dallas Fuel. If you're new to this series, just know that basically I evaluate the team in terms of their coaches and their players to see how they stack up against the rest of the league, and then I make a prediction after talking about all the players and coaches to tell you guys where I think the Dallas Fuel will end up finishing in the overall standings in Overwatch League Season 2. Alrighty then, with that out of the way, let's quickly go over the coaching staff for the Dallas Fuel. Usually, I just like to talk strictly about the head coach in these types of videos, but I feel like it's very necessary to talk about the assistant coach and the head coach for the Fuel because they have two very popular and intelligent men at those positions. Of course, at the head coaching position, they have Arrow, and as their assistant coach, they have the popular Twitch streamer, Jane. I strongly believe that both Arrow and Jane make up one of the strongest coaching staffs in the entire Overwatch League. Like I mentioned before, they're both super intelligent and I think they're both very knowledgeable when it comes to Overwatch. And as a result of this, I think all of the players on the Dallas Fuel are going to grow tremendously from all of the help they'll receive from the two of them. I'm going to stop myself there and move on to the players because I feel like I could talk about both Jane and Arrow all day long. I'm a big fan of both of them and I could easily make a video just about the two of them and it could probably be around the same length as this video. So with that being said, let's move on to the main tank position. The Fuel only have one player at this position at the moment, and of course, it is OGE. This guy is really good at the game. I thought when he first joined Dallas, he was a little bit underrated in terms of how he performed, but during Stage 4, I really think he proved his work to everyone out there with the way he played on Reinhardt and Winston. His arrest is not bad either. I think he's just a very consistent player, and I expect him to be one of the bright spots on the Fuel this season. Up next on Flex Tank, I first wanted to talk about Mickey, and yes, I know no, he's not the greatest at what he does. I'd say he's a pretty average diva player, maybe slightly above average at best, but at least his Brigitte's good, right? And although he's not the best flex tank player out there, I think it's important to have a guy like Mickey on any Overwatch League team. You know what? Actually, scratch that. Any sports team in general. He never fails to lighten up the mood. It's really good to have positive people like this influencing you every single day. The guy just kept on smiling through everything. Even when the Dallas Fuel had so much adversity going on through their organization, he kept on smiling and laughing through it all. The guy just has this overwhelming amount of positivity that surrounds his body. I don't know what it is, but I love it. There's another good thing about Mickey though, it doesn't just end there. There's also the fact that he is kind of a clown, he likes to mess around and have a good time, even when he's on stage, and I think that's great. Again, it never hurts to have a guy like Mickey on your team. Even if it's not an esports organization, even if it's a baseball team, a football team, it does not matter. Having someone like Mickey is always going to benefit you. Joining Mickey at the flex tank role is RCK, and he was one of the new acquisitions for the Dallas Fuel that they got during the offseason. He comes from Team Giganti, which means that he's gotten some good experience. He was on a solid team, and he played against some really good talent in Overwatch Contenders Europe. I think RCK has a solid hero pool for his position. He can play D.Va and Zarya, of course but also he can flex onto Genji too which means that he may play some projectile DPS for the fuel during the season in some of the games. I'm pretty excited to see what this guy can bring to the table. That's all I have to say about the off tank position for the fuel so now let's move on to their supports. On main support the Dallas fuel actually have two players. One is of course Harry Hook they held on to him but they also acquired Closer who was formerly on the London Spitfire. I think that both of these guys are pretty decent at the main support role. I don't think they're anything special, but they're not horrible either. I think of them as maybe slightly above average at best. I don't think we're going to see much of Harry Hook because one, I'm pretty sure he said that he won't really be playing for the Fuel, but two, I've heard a lot of rumors about the Fuel really liking Closer and what he brings to the table for them. Which I find to be very interesting because Closer really never did anything super impressive on the Spitfire. He wasn't bad or anything, but I don't think he was all that great either. But maybe the London Spitfire just weren't a good fit for him. Maybe the Dallas Fuel has been his calling this whole time, and this is the team he really belongs on. I really hope that Closer ends up having a good season, and that he ends up being part of something that could potentially be very special. Moving on to flex support, we of course have to talk about the bloodthirsty Frenchman himself, Unco. And what is there not to say about this guy? Not only is he one of the most consistent Zenyatta players out there, but I very much consider him 
him to be one of the best Western Zens out there. There aren't many who can compare to his skill level. He's got extremely good mechanics both on Zenyatta and Ana. He has just this very fluid way of playing the game and I very much enjoy watching it. Acquiring Unko from the LA Valiant was one of the smartest moves the Dallas Fuel could have ever made and I think it's safe to say they are set at the flex support position until further notice. That's all I have to say about the Dallas Fuel support player, so now let's talk about the DPS role, and I want to start things off by talking about Effect, because I consider him to be the best player on this entire team. You can make the argument that maybe OGE or Unko do a little bit more for the team, but I personally think Effect is the best. All you have to do is just look at what he did during Overwatch League Season 1 for this squad. He carried them time and time again, even though they were still losing a lot of their games, he consistently showed up and popped off. Effect is one of the hardest workers in this entire league and I think it pays off just by looking at how he performs in game you can tell that his aim is just absolutely crazy and the reason for that is because he just works on it all the time. He's one of the better hit scan players in the league in my opinion. His Widowmaker, his McCree, and his Tracer are all absolutely insane. He can also play Doomfist, he can play some Zarya too I believe. This guy can do a little bit of everything which is just awesome. Effect is just a superstar DPS player and I can't wait to see what he does for the fuel this season. There is one concern I have about him, however, and that is his mental state. If it gets really bad, he could end up getting burnt out like he did last season. I really hope that this time around that doesn't happen and he stays for all of the games this year because I think the fuel are going to need him. The second DPS player on the Dallas fuel is Taimu, and he also happens to be a hit scan specialist. His signature hero is McCree, but his Widowmaker is also quite strong. Overwatch League Season 1 was a bumpy ride for Taimu. First, he had to play Winston for a little bit. Then after that, he considered quitting Overwatch League just because he didn't like what was going on with the organization. There was too much drama and he just wasn't happy. But then suddenly during stage four, something just clicked and he was back to the good old time we were used to seeing as he was popping off on Widow and McCree all the time, even making guys like Pine and Carpe look like fools. I believe that season two will be a lot better for Taimu and I think he's going to have a great year. I don't know how much playtime he's going to get just because there's a lot of DPS players on this roster, but I'm confident that'll make the most of any playtime he does end up getting. The third player in this DPS rotation is also known for his hitscan ability. Of course, I'm talking about AKM. I know he's kind of a meme in this community, but with all jokes aside, I think of him as a pretty high skill player. He's got impeccable aim. He's really good on Widow, Soldier 76, and McCree. I know Soldier's kind of irrelevant in the meta, but that doesn't change the fact that he's one of the best Soldier players I've ever seen. My biggest problem with AKM is actually his inconsistency. I feel like there are times where he absolutely dominates the opposition, and then there's other games where he's the one getting dominated. It's very strange, and I'm really hoping he can fix that coming into Season 2. And finally, last but certainly not least, is the flex DPS player, Zachary. And it's kind of weird that he's the flex player on the field, just because he's also mostly known for his hitscan role. I know that he can play Genji and maybe a little bit of Farah. He's also a decent Brigitte player, but I think he's mostly known for playing Tracer and Sombra, so it is kind of strange to see him as the flex DPS player on this team. Nonetheless though, I think Zachary is a guy with a lot of potential. He's shown flashes at times, but he's also inconsistent kind of like with AKM. Zachary also lacks pro experience. I know that he played in contenders for a while and that he was on the American Overwatch World Cup team this year but he hasn't played enough against the tier one players. And I think because of that, he might not do too hot at the beginning of Overwatch League season two, perhaps by the end of the year, or maybe going into season three, we'll see him progress into a really good player. I think that in time, Zachary will gain the skill and knowledge needed to be very successful in the Overwatch League. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything that I wanted to say about the Dallas Fuel's players and coaches. The Dallas Fuel have a reasonably high ceiling as to how well they can perform this season. But the question is, can they put all the pieces together? It's honestly hard to say if the Dallas Fuel will figure things out. There are a lot of concerns surrounding this team, and I personally am very worried about the DPS spot for them. They have four players who are all mostly known for their hitscan abilities. I know some of them can play other things like Zarya, Brigitte, and some of the projectile heroes here and there, but they don't have a legit flex DPS player in my opinion. Siegel retiring was one of the worst possible things that could have happened to the Fuel. Not 
only are they missing out on a legit flex DPS player, but they're also missing out on a really good D.Va player too, and that's a shame because while RCK and Mickey both aren't bad at D.Va, I think it's safe to say that Seagull was better than both of them. Speaking of flex tank, that's another issue I have with this team. I think that Mickey and RCK are both decent players, don't get me wrong, but I'm worried about how consistent they're going to be. I think that in the Overwatch League, you need a consistent D.Va player that always shows up every single game. Just look at someone like Space or Fury or even Mecco from NYXL. All of these guys have one thing in common. They're very consistent. Because of these concerns that I have, I predict that the Dallas Fuel will finish anywhere from 15th to 10th in the overall standings in Overwatch League Season 2. It's hard for me to say how good I think the Fuel will do in Overwatch League Season 2. There's just so many question marks, and that's exactly why I put this big margin of where I think they could finish in the standings. I think they'll finish in the lower half of the standings if they aren't able to put everything together, and maybe guys like Zachary, Closer, and RCK don't don't do too well but on the other hand if they do figure things out and they get into a rhythm I think they'll be able to compete against just about any team and they could very well end up making the playoffs one thing I'd like to add before I start to wrap things up is that the fuel could be a dangerous team in the goats meta and I say that because they can abuse the fact that Mickey is a really good Brigitte player and then you could have RCK slide over to D.Va and then maybe have effect play Zarya and you could have a recipe for success just an idea and that pretty much wraps everything up here ladies and gentlemen that's how good i think the dallas fuel will be in overwatch league season two so if you enjoyed this content today make sure to hit that like button and if you're new around here consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss my next overwatch league discussion video i plan on doing a how good is your overwatch league team video for every single team so stay tuned for the next episode and feel free to let me know what you think of the dallas fuel down in the comment section thank you all so much for watching and until next time this is atp Signing out. Peace.